and welcome to another episode of FUBAR. Today, we are going to talk about the new feature from AWS Step Functions Distributed Map. That is a new feature that allows you to process a lot of data in parallel. So before going into that, I want to show you a little bit what are the flow options that you have in Step Functions, because this will help you to understand the video. So these that you see in the screen are the different flow options that you have. We have from selects, if and else, parallel, map, pass, wait, success and fail. So all these different things help you to build a state machine. So you can build an if self condition, you can run things in parallel and so on and so forth. I will not go into the details of each of these flow actions, but if it's something you want to know more and you want me to talk about everything more in detail, let me know in the comments. Basically, we have parallel and map, and those are the ones I want to chat really fast. What is parallel and what is map? Parallel basically allows you to run separate branches in parallel. So imagine that you have two different things, totally different thing. One is to, I don't know, do a validation and then register a user for one thing and then a parallel branch that sends a newsletter. Those two things are parallel and independent. You can run them with the parallel flow. And then we have the map. And the map basically allows you to run in parallel the processing of array. So you have an array of things, and then you can run processing for each of those items in the array in parallel. Basically like JavaScript map, like similar thing, but in step functions. And this is very powerful. Until today, not today because this is <laughs> coming out in January, but after reInvent, we only could run 40 parallel interactions. So we have this map state that has this inline functionality that allows you to run four concurrent operations at the same time, parallel operations. Now we have the distributed map, and these allow us to run up to 10,000 parallel invocations. So this is awesome. Now we are not limited to 40 runs. We can have up to 10,000. And the cool thing with distributed map that is optimized for S3. So basically, because this is the most natural way of having thousands of thousands of things is to put them in S3. Either you can have thousands of images uploaded to S3 and then interact over each of the images bit by bit or files that put images, but you can have any kind of file and then go one by one and process them in parallel. So basically if you have thousands of them, then you process them all in parallel and boom, you have the results super fast. Or you can have a big file that contains like JSON or a comma separated value file. It contains a lot of items in the rows or in the different items in the JSON. And you can process that one by one in parallel. And that it's very powerful. You can build interesting data processing. For example, here, my colleague Ben has built a distributed map GIF generator. So the idea here is that you upload a movie and then this state machine will create GIFs from that movie. So here you can see that the first part, what it's doing is grabbing the movie, splitting it into many chunks, uploading all those chunks to S3. And then the distributed map will go over all these chunks and convert them to GIFs. That's one use case. But I want to do a little different use case. So you have another one to choose from. I want to show you how you can process a big file, like comma separated value, but this apply also to JSON, and how you can work with it. So my idea here is to grab my YouTube metrics. I have many YouTube channels and I want to integrate all the metrics together. And I don't know, I come with this idea because it's a big <laughs> file with CSV data and I can iterate over. So the idea here is to grab this comma separated value file, put it in a stream and then iterate over each of these items in parallel and do different things. So we are going to build a state machine that has the distributed map and it has inside a step function. So the state machine that is the parent, that is the one with this distributed map, 
is a standard state machine. So we have the difference between standard and express. They have different pricing and different capabilities. I leave you a link in the description box and a whole playlist on step functions. But basically, these are a little bit more expensive and they are based on transitions. That's the cost. They last up to one year and they allow you to do the distributed map. And then in here, I have a child step function that this one is an express state function. And because I'm running this asynchronously, I'm basically running the state machine, basically fire and forget. I'm running the state machine and then these are completing on their own in parallel. And I don't not caring because every item is processing differently. And the state machine, the child state machine, what it does, it's using a lot of the integrations that test function does against the API. So I'm using a lot of that. First, it's checking if the item exists in my metadata table. And then if it exists, then I just updates the total views to the metadata table and then add a monthly metric check. And then if it doesn't exist, it creates the item in the metadata table and then also adds the monthly metrics in my other table. So I will have two different Dynamo tables, one with the metadata for each of the videos and then another one with monthly data. So every month I can come, I can upload the metrics and this will start building all my data. So how we do this? Let's go and check the code. So this application is built with AWS SAM. We could build this with CDK, no problem. Let me know if you want to have state machines with CDK in the comments. I'm looking for content for next year. And here you can see that we have the, the parent state machine and the child state machine. So we can go inside of this one and we can see that this is a state machine of the type standard. This is the name. Then it has the definition written as Amazon state language, and it has a couple of definition substitution, and it has some permissions to do things. One of those things is to execute the child. That sounds horrible. <laughs> but one of the things that it can do is to basically start the child step machine. And if we go to the definition, I cannot draw it here because the Visual Studio plugin doesn't allow me to draw distributed mapping yet. That's why you can see the red lines and everything in there. So sorry for that, but it's, it's there. And here we can see that we have the state machine and it has one state that is the map state. That is the type map and it does the distributed mapping and it does the express. And then we are executing the step function inside, and this is running the execution of that internal state machine. And we just pass the ARN and that's it. And then we have the definition for the child state machine. And this is more or less the same. And we have the definition here for that state machine as well. And this one, we can draw it because there is support for this one. And this is the one I show you that it has different connections with Dynamo and it's using the API. So you can see here that we are getting the item. We are using the API. We are using choice state, like if else. Then we are adding the item again using the API. We are invoking a Lambda function to update the total views for when we need to. And then we are adding the monthly metrics as well. So all of that is going on there. Basically here you will have all the code. And what we are going to do is we are going to upload an S3 CSV file. And this is a file. I will not put it in the code, but you can build it yourself. I will give you the information that basically has this type of header that this is more or less the same header that YouTube will return. And then it has all the different videos. These are just 80 something videos from my Spanish channel. And it has all the information from that. So we can see what happened. This is uploaded here. So now we can go to the state machine to the parent one and we can start an execution. It doesn't matter what you put here because it doesn't rely on that. And we can start seeing that the map uh, execution is blue. That means that the map is running and when it finished, it will be green as you see now. 
So if you want to see what is going on, you can open the map run, but you can also check here the different inputs and outputs, and you can also click in the different states and you can see more information. So if you go to the details, you can see how many items it was processing, 82, and how many failed, how many were aborted. You can see the map run. I will go in there. We can see the definition of that internal step function, and we can see all the different events that happened. So let's go to the map run. And here you can, if there was some error, you will be able to see them in this failed, and you can see how many are running, how many are pending, and then you can see for each of these executions, the input and the output. But again, this is a fire and forget execution. So our output doesn't tell anything. It's just um, basically asynchronous. So we can go into the state machines, into the child, and we can see here all the different executions that we have. There should be 82 of them, an open one, and then we can navigate what is going on. So we can see if the item exists and we can go to the inputs and we can see the outputs for each of these states, we can then understand what everything is doing at the item and so on and so forth. And then add the monthly metrics and that's how we are going to build the whole thing. And if we go to Dynamo, we should see these tables getting populated so we can check the tables we can see metrics tables and metadata so we can explore the items so this is the metadata so this is what is being populated for my state machine the public the video title and the views and then we have metrics table that here we are just uploading the view so next month i will add a new line that says 202301 and then it will say the id and the amount of views that we got that month and then in here it will add the views from that month to here so that's something i want to build and that's a whole iteration so this is really nice because now very simply, you can build these super complex parallelizations. If you want to build those before, you had to implement these iterations and you have to handle the concurrency. Now you can do a lot of those concurrency executions from the state machine itself. So we can see some of the properties. You have the configuration. I open it in Workflow Studio so you can see. And you can see that the Amazon S3, I'm getting a CSV file. And then you can do batching. So I could process many CSV lines per batch. So that's way more efficient. So if I'm running concurrency situations, for example, I'm running Lambda here. So that might help if I want to batch my processing. So I don't run into some scaling issues or if I want to run some more legacy system, or I want to have, I have thousands of thousands of lines, and then I want to make this more efficient because this runs up to 10,000 concurrency, but sometimes our downstream services don't have that capability. And here we can also set the concurrency limit. So we can send it to a hundred child executions or a thousand child executions. So that's something you can do. And here you can define if the child is express or standard. This is express is faster, surely and cheaper, but it needs to last less than five minutes while standard is long running. So that's something you can also define here. And then, well, the typical things that you can do with step functions. And then the cool thing is you can add your retries as well. So if there is some error, processing that you can basically try again and get started. So there is quite interesting configurations. And again, you can do it on a file. You can do it on a JSON file. You can do it on an inventory list from your S3, or you can do it from a list of objects in an S3 bucket or using a prefix or something like that. So capabilities are endless. And that's the video for today. I hope you like this new feature. And if you want to learn more about the step functions, I leave you a playlist where I go into a lot of details with the step functions. 
And if you want to know more details on how I built this particular feature next week, and maybe it's already published when you're watching this, I will put it here. There is a video on intrinsic functions that increase the power of a step functions. So stay watching. I see you in another episode of Ubar. Ciao, ciao.